Let's delve deep into the world of gifts, specifically in the biblical context. We shall explore the book of Numbers chapter 7, which offers an intriguing perspective on this. In this chapter, we witness the dedication of the altar and the unique gifts brought forth by the leaders of Israel. Each leader represented a tribe, and each tribe brought forward the same gift. But what's interesting here isn't the uniformity of the gifts, but the individual recognition each tribe received despite the similarity in their offerings. This chapter opens with the dedication of the altar. It was a time of celebration, a moment shared by all the tribes of Israel. However, it was not the grandeur of the event that captivated attention, but rather the simple act of giving. Each leader representing their tribe offered the same gift, one silver dish, one silver basin, one gold dish filled with incense, one young bull, one ram, and one lamb. Yet, despite the identical nature of the offerings, each tribe was acknowledged individually. Each gift, though similar in form, was received with equal acceptance. This signifies the weight of intention over the material aspect of the gift. It wasn't about the silver dishes or the golden bowls. It wasn't about the bulls, the rams or the lambs. It was about the heart behind the offering, the intention to participate wholeheartedly in the dedication of the altar. So what does this say about the act of giving? It poses a profound truth that the value of a gift lies not in its material worth, but in the intention behind it. It's not about what you give, but about why and how you give it. This chapter reminds us that the act of giving is not about the gift itself, but the heart behind it. So the next time you offer a gift, remember, it's your intention that truly matters. What if every gift you gave, regardless of its size or value, was received with equal gratitude and joy? Now imagine this on a grander scale, where every tribe, every community, every individual, despite the size or value of their offering, is seen as equal before the divine. In the book of Numbers chapter 7, we find a remarkable testament to this very principle. The chapter is filled with repetition, almost to the point of redundancy. Each tribe's offering is listed in detail, not just once, but 12 times. And interestingly, every tribe's offering is identical to the others. Now you might ask, why such repetition? Why go through the trouble of listing the same offerings over and over again? The answer lies not in the offerings themselves, but in the message they carry. This repetition, this insistence on detailing every tribe's offering is not about the gifts, it's about the givers. It's about the tribes. In the eyes of God, no tribe is considered superior to another. Whether it's Judah or Issachar, Benjamin or Dan, every tribe is valued equally. Their offerings, identical in nature, serve as a reminder that in the divine realm there is no hierarchy, no favoritism. This principle of equality extends beyond the tribes. It embraces every individual, whether you are a leader or a follower, a teacher or a student, a parent or a child. Your worth is not determined by what you offer, but by the sincerity and humility with which you offer it. This concept of equality is a cornerstone of many faiths and philosophies, a golden rule that transcends cultural and geographical boundaries. It guides us towards a deeper understanding of our own worth and the worth of others. It encourages us to approach every act of giving, every interaction with a sense of equality and respect. So the next time you find yourself giving or receiving, remember the seventh chapter of the book of Numbers. Remember that in the eyes of divinity, your gift, however small or large, is valued just as much as any other. The book of Numbers, in its seventh chapter, teaches us that in the eyes of divinity, we are all equal. Imagine being able to speak directly to the divine. What would you say? As we delve into the final verses of Numbers chapter 7, we find ourselves standing at the entrance of the Tent of Meeting alongside Moses. This sacred space serves not only as a place of worship, but also as a conduit for divine communication. Moses steps into this space, not out of his own volition, but at the behest of God. In this moment, we see Moses embodying a significant role, that of a mediator. He stands between God and the Israelites, a conduit for the divine will. This role is not for the faint-hearted. It requires a level of faith and trust that is both awe-inspiring and humbling. Moses, despite his own doubts and fears, steps into this role with unwavering faith. His faith is not blind, nor is it untested. It is a faith born out of experience, out of witnessing miracles and divine interventions. It is a faith that acknowledges the divine plan. 
even when that plan seems inscrutable to mortal eyes. But what is perhaps most striking about this moment of communion between Moses and God is its simplicity. There are no grand gestures, no thunderous voices from the heavens. Instead, there is a quiet conversation, a sharing of divine wisdom. This is a testament to the importance of open communication in our spiritual journey. It is through this dialogue that Moses receives guidance that he gains insight into the divine plan. And it is through this dialogue that he is able to relay God's will to the Israelites, guiding them on their journey through the wilderness. So what does this tell us? It speaks to the power of faith and the importance of open communication in our relationship with the divine. It reminds us that even in the face of the unknown, we can find solace and guidance through our faith. Through Moses' communion with the divine, we are reminded of the power of faith and the importance of open communication in our spiritual journey. Are you ready for the next chapter? Just click here to go straight to it.